Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is the second in a series of webinars to empower educators. Our webinar series provide you with a preview, just a preview of the work we do with schools and organizations. If you like what you see, please contact us about presenting the expanded workshop to your organization, school, or district. Today's presenter is Brendan Peterson. Brendan joined Citrus full-time in 2012 as Chief Academic Officer. Brendan is responsible for curriculum development, including research, written content, and providing expertise in teaching and communications. Brendan is the Pennsylvania State Coordinator for Schools of Character and serves as Citrus Point Person for the National Schools of Character Program. He has over 20 years of experience working and leading in schools. Thank you, Brendan, for all the work that you do with Citrus and in character education. Thank you very much, Nichelle, for that very kind introduction. And uh, it's just an absolute pleasure to be uh, having the opportunity to present this uh, webinar to you today. So uh, we're going to jump right in. And uh, as you see the title, um, is rejuvenating your school culture five strategies using a character focused approach um, so i'm going to just move along here if you can just so we get a little bit of a sense of where people are I already see some of the people jumping in in the chat and uh just tell me where you're from your school or organization current role job title um, it's nice for the team and i at citrus to have a little bit of a sense of of where people are are coming from Yep, and I see some, this is great. Welcome everyone. I see the names and uh, people coming in from uh, different parts of the country. So uh, really a, a big welcome to all of you and uh, thank you for joining us. As you're doing that, I'm going to move along here. Just today's objectives. Uh, my hope is that you'll come away appreciating the transformative power of a positive school culture that you'll really uh you know hone in on that idea that school culture is critical uh you'll reflect on what a healthy school culture looks like and how it requires intentionality it, it doesn't just happen but requires intentionality you'll consider the impact character can have on school culture we're going to be focusing particularly on that, that the concept of character. Um, and uh, finally, and this is in the very title, as you saw of, of, the, um, of the webinar, we'll learn five character-focused practical strategies that can rejuvenate your school culture. So, and if you don't mind sharing this in the chat, the, my first question is, what word would you use to describe a healthy school culture. Just whatever comes to mind when we talk about a healthy school culture. So I see there, uh, vibrant, great word, shared values, welcoming, inclusive, safe, supportive, friendliness, sense of community, belonging. Um, great responses, relationships, teamwork. Phenomenal. I'm just going to, you know, the, the words, I'm sure there's, there's, there's so many different things we, we could say about school culture, a healthy school culture. These were just some of my little brainstorms, uh, little words that came to mind. I said, caring, a sense of belonging, warmth, encouraging, welcoming, a place of integrity, of real honesty, a place that's creative and, and open to new ideas and new ways of thinking, a place that's principled, a, a school that, you know, where there's a sense of, of, uh, of belief and, and certain things are non-negotiables, it's principled. Uh, there's a sense of connectedness where everyone's connected. No one 
no one is on the fringes in a healthy school culture. Everyone's part of that next word, a family, a bigger family. It's positive. It's respectful. It's safe. It's hardworking. People, people are there to work. They're, they're there to learn. They're there to broaden their horizons um, and, and to become not just good students, but you know, people who are going to make a difference uh, in their own lives, in their own families, and, and whatever they may end up doing uh, you know, further down the road in life. It's a place of humility. Where there's where there's a growth mindset where we don't have all the answers but we're we're we're, we're open-minded we're going to listen to others we're going to learn from others we're going to be humble and finally it's joyful it's a joyful place those are just some of the words uh that that i think um are, are connected with a healthy school culture defining school culture i think it's very important that we we have you know that we're not too loose in, in what we're talking about here so this is from ASCD, the Association for Supervision Curriculum Development. Uh, one of the definitions they mentioned was the way teachers and other staff members work together and the set of beliefs, values, and assumptions they share. Here's another one. The guiding beliefs and values evident in the way a school operates. And this is from uh, Dr. Michael Fowen, who um, is the author of one of the best known uh, educational textbooks, The New Meaning of Educational Change. Probably a lot of you on this webinar have uh, read that book or parts of that book, chapters of that book at some time. But uh, Fullen says, the guiding beliefs and values evident in a way a school operates. Uh, this, lastly, this uh, definition, it comes from Ebony Bridewell Mitchell, who's a faculty member at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And uh, culture is connections. In a strong culture, there are many overlapping and cohesive interactions so that knowledge about the organization's distinctive character and what it takes to thrive in it is widely spread. People know what's going on. They're not lost. There's a sense of direction. There's a steadiness in that school. There, people feel connected. Okay. So with that, you know, we, we've hit a lot of positive things here. Uh, I'd like to just for a moment, because we're talking about rejuvenating a school culture. So the implication here is that something needs rejuvenating, something needs a little bit of new life renewal. And, uh, for that to be the case, we have to say, well, what negatively impacts school culture? What, what might chip away at school culture and af affect it in a negative way? So if you don't mind sharing that in the chat, we'll just get a few thoughts there. Prejudice. Poor communication. Definitely both, both really good uh, uh, responses. So true. A lack of trust, absolutely. Burnt out, I think so many, we've seen that in education. Follow through, the need for follow through. Uh, someone said, that's what I was going to say. Lorraine said, that's what I was going to, and that's it. Uh, divisions, divisions, bullying, conflict between teachers and administrators. Great answer. Th these are all fabulous answers. Well, I'm going to keep moving. Lack of guiding principles, negativity. Really good. Okay. Just, just uh, building on your, the, the fantastic answers that you just shared with me. These are some things, again, just, just quick brainstorm. I think everyone would agree that COVID has had a negative impact on school culture. Uh, school isolation. Uh, social isolation, where especially when we go to remote learning or um, um, and even even some of the things, cancellations and things that have happened because of uh, the, the COVID related situation, social isolation, people feeling alone, uh, health concerns, family obligations, workload, anxiety, fatigue, uncertainty. So all this, this kind of these kind of things that 
Um, and, and there's a lot of different triggers and things connected with these, but they, they chip away at school culture. And, and a lot of times it's, it's no one's fault. It's just these things, these things happen. And, uh, but they do affect negatively affect school culture. Um, culture before change. This is uh, one of the, the, the probably uh, longest professors uh, who had, who had uh, worked at Yale, um, Seymour Saracen. He worked at Yale, uh, considered one of the fathers of community psychology. Uh, he worked at Yale for over 40 years. And, and he once said, if you attempt to implement reforms but fail to engage the culture of a school, nothing will change nothing will change so you must address the culture now we're going to be getting at character as the piece to do this and just uh, a few weeks ago earlier this month we celebrated the uh national holiday of dr martin luther king jr and he summed it up so well intelligence plus character that is the goal of education intelligence plus character Thomas Lacona, what is character? One's character is one's habitual way of behaving. We all have patterns of behavior or habits, and often we are quite unaware of them. When Socrates urged us to know thyself, he clearly was directing us to know our habitual ways of responding to the world around us. So, we're going to focus we're going to be intentional about character an intentional focus on character is the lever that can lift up and reinvigorate school culture that's my thesis really here that uh you know just like this this uh the the the, the man in the picture here that that stick he's holding that lever is is what's going to lift that big rock up so that rock doesn't sink into the mud. It's gonna, it's gonna lift it up and put it on, on solid ground. An initial focus, an intentional focus on character. What are we communicating when we do this? We're communicating that people matter. Education is a human endeavor. We teach students, not subjects. So often we get so caught up in the curriculum that we forget that this is human work. We're working with people. Um, character is not another item on the plate. It is the plate. Uh, he's on this uh, webinar uh, today, but Dr. Bill Trussheim uh, was one of the first people down at the character.org forum years ago that I heard that from. Character is not another item on the plate. It is the plate. Uh, you recognize the effort people are making and you see the good in them. When we focus on character, we do that. We see, we, we let, we're letting people know that we see the good in them. And we, we communicate that we care. And there's a great saying, we use it a lot at Citrus. Our president of Citrus, Gene Miller, uses it all the time. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt is, is one of the spokespeople to have been credited for coming up with this quote. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay. So let's get to it. What are the five practical character focused strategies that rejuvenate a school culture? Note, we are answering the perennial question, what does good character look like? We are training the eye to see it. And I emphasize again, these are these are practical strategies. You may you may say, you know, Brendan, this is kind of common sense stuff, but I think uh, you know, it, it, it's it's that intentionality and really putting a little thought into it that that you know that these things we're going to prioritize these things. Okay, number one, provide exemplars. Number two, attach a trait. Number three, use quotes. Number four, activate, characterize, and number five, smile act as an act of service. Let's get to strategy number one: provide exemplars. Exemplars are nothing more than models worthy of imitation, excellent examples of character. Now, when we talk about exemplars, 
We can use exemplars from personal stories, our own experience in life. We can draw examples from literature, from history, um, from any of the academic uh, disciplines for that matter, uh, uh, science, technology, engineering, math, uh, you name it, um, the arts. Uh, photos and images, uh, a photo or an image can be worth a thousand words. And sometimes that's a great way to, to communicate an example of character. TV and film, um, current events, articles, social media, organizations or teams that our students might be familiar with, uh, watching a, you know, a big uh, um, game or, or match um, some of, of, a, of a sporting event sometimes can be an excellent way to point out an example of good character. And finally, video clips. There are lots of video clips out there that, that we can use to communicate an example of good character. Okay, I'm gonna share one exa example just from uh, using uh, a personal story. And that was my high school geometry teacher, Mr. Wallace, AKA Coach Wallace. We all called him Coach Wallace. And he, Mr. Wallace was a, a, an, an excellent uh, math teacher, excellent at his craft. But what I noticed most about uh, Mr. Wallace was not so much, you know, his his knowledge of his subject. He was he was very um, very knowledgeable, but was his um, was his cheerfulness when he walked around the, the 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 hallways of our high school. He was just so cheerful. He always had a smile for you. He always had he had this like upbeat way. Like a, um, he had a little skip to his step, and 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 it communicated a positivity. And he and he would say something real friendly uh, to you. And he had this, um, you know, this kind of classic uh, New Jersey accent. But he um, he was a man of integrity. One of the things I noticed, he didn't gossip. He wasn't someone who would spend a lot of time in the teacher room. He would spend time working on grading papers. You would see him in between classes working. And, um, and if he was talking to someone, he'd be lifting them up. He'd be encouraging them. He'd be talking about something positive. He was very principled. He was demanding on his students, but in a reasonable way. And he, uh, he was kind-hearted and humble. He was, he was uh, someone who would admit if he didn't have the answers, and he could laugh at himself. He had a great sense of humor, um, but never at the expense of any of his students. So that's just a, a little illustration of how, you know, I'm, I'm in this situation, I'm using a personal story as an exemplar. Okay, strategy number two, attach a trait. What do I mean here? Traits or character traits are good habits virtues or qualities displayed or lived out by a person. Now, when I talk about attaching a trait, it's pointing out the good that we might see in a student, pointing out, pointing out in, in either their behavior, something they've done in, in class, something they've done outside of class, and we're attaching a virtue to it. I saw this done so well recently at a high school basketball game. It was a very competitive game. Uh, it was in the fourth quarter, and two of the opposing players on opposite teams were going for a loose ball, and they dove to the floor and, and collided. And the one, one, one player got called for a personal foul, not an intentional foul, a personal foul for knocking the other player down. But they were both on the ground. And, and the one official went over to the scorer's table and, and called, you know, called the foul. And the other referee who was right there, he, he quietly but effectively, clearly said, good sportsmanship, number 13. And why did he say that? Because number 13 had extended his hand and helped the player who he had knocked to the floor. He had helped that player up. He helped them off the floor. And the players around it 
heard the official say good sportsmanship number 13. The player himself heard it. The opposing player heard it. And I was about five or six rows back in the stands and I heard it because it was on the side of the court where I was sitting. And it was, a, it was an excellent example of attaching a trait. Here it was, sportsmanship. That player, number 13, the parents who were watching the game, other students watching the game, the players on the court, they will know that that's what sportsmanship looks like in, in at least one incidence. So that was a, a perfect example, seamless a, example of attaching a trait. And there are plenty of opportunities for us as teachers, as mentors, as coaches to do this all of the time. Attaching a trait is a way of infusing a vocabulary of character into everyday life. It underscores the good that we see in our students in a specific way. It reinforces and encourages virtues. It helps our students and ourselves to focus on character. And here, it's, there's no trophies being given out. It's, it's really encouraging something that's very intrinsic, but you're just, you're pointing it out. Um, this will be one of our handouts. Nichelle will make sure everyone gets this. Um, but this is our virtues matrix at Citrus. And what this is, is we have 10 primary virtues, and then we have what we, what we uh, refer to as in the family uh, a progressive stage virtues under each of the primary 10. And then we have in the family virtues. And for purposes of, of our discussion here today, I just think it's, it's, it's helpful as a list of vocabulary of character. It gives you lots of different ways to attach a trait, lots of different character traits, virtues. Uh, very often, you know, it can be hard to, you know, to come up with a word at the time, but this gives us a way to do that. Um, strategy number three, using a quote. Benefits of using quotes. They are bite-sized nuggets, easy to read, analyze, and digest. A few words put together can inspire people and really speak to their hearts. They're easy to print out and mount on the walls of your classroom, school, hallways, and other prominent places. They can be used as a tagline to an email. They can be used to spark classroom discussions. And they can be used as part of morning announcements, advisory or house meetings, and or to reinforce a virtue of the week or virtue of the month. Just one note here too, it, it can be fun once you do this to have your students come up with a quote. Okay, whoop, sorry about that. Okay, just a few quotes, using quotes. This is just, um, here's a general quote on character uh, from Anne Frank. Anne Frank said, human greatness does not lie in wealth or power, but in character and goodness. People are just people. And all people have faults and shortcomings, but all of us are born with a basic goodness. So that can be a beautiful quote just to break down, um, you know, the word character a little bit to talk about character. Um, Desmond Tutu, who just recently passed away, uh, the, the well-known uh, uh, African bishop and, and tremendous leader for, for peace, um, he, he talking about the virtue of hope. He said, hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. So there's an example of, a, of a, a quote on hope that can be broken down. What does that mean? What is he talking about? Light and darkness, uh, but a powerful way to communicate the virtue of hope. Now here's one on perseverance. Um, and this is by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Perseverance is a great element of success. If you only knock long enough and loud enough, you are sure to wake up somebody. So just an example of perseverance. Okay. Strategy number four, activate character eyes. And this is just a fun way of, of, of getting uh, our students to think about 
seeing character, looking for character. So we, we can call it activating character eyes. Um, what is it like? It's like putting on your thinking cap. We, we all have that expression we've heard and, and teachers have probably told us over the years, um, put on your thinking caps. But in this case, we're activating our students' eyes to be on the lookout for character. So we're activating their character eyes. And you could do this in a creative way in the classroom with, with fun little uh, props, uh, like you see the, the, the uh, student here with a magnifying glass. You could have binoculars. You can make your own little maybe cutouts of, of a piece of paper that just to get your, your students thinking about uh, looking with their character eyes. Here, what is this about? We're asking our students to identify where and in whom they see good character displayed. What character trait or traits do they see with their character eyes? Hold on one second. Before I move on there, I just want to say this is something that can be done uh, not just not just in a, uh, in a in a setting where they're you know physically looking around them, but it can be done you know when they're reading something. Uh, it could be a close read in literature or history or any other subject for that matter, and 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 we encourage them to look with their character eyes. What is it they see? You're you're honing in. You're helping them to be discerning. And, and I think this day and age, if there's one thing that, that marks our 21st century, it's, it's, it's the idea that our, our students are getting bombarded with images, whether it's social media, whether it's, um, you know, all the different ways, uh, you know, they're always on their iPhones and different gadgets. And, and, but we want to be able to help them become discerning and to be able to, to see with the eyes of character to really look for that attention to detail so that they can pick out these traits, these, these themes of character. Um, much like if, if you're reading a, a, a book or, or a text, you might have a little pencil in hand or a little highlighter and you're highlighting things. You're, you're, you're finding th those ingredients of character. So uh, it's just a fun way to be able to tell kids, let's activate your character eyes. Okay, and our last strategy here, strategy number five, smile as an act of service. When all else fails, and, and very often that can happen, we, we feel like we, we can't remember our strategies, we're, we're not in, in, in the right frame of mind, but if we can remind ourselves to smile as an act of service, we'll do a lot of good. Mother Teresa, uh, has, has said this, uh, said this about smiling. We shall never know all the good a simple smile can do. She also said, every time you smile at someone, it's an action of love, a gift to that person, a beautiful thing. And so with this, I would like to invite uh, Suzanne Bracci, who's our director of GROW, um, to say a few things, Suzanne, just to, for a little context, is uh, has done many years of counseling, has worked in the field of psychology, and she has a, a few interesting things, I think, to share about uh, smiling. Thanks, Brendan. And if you could keep it on that last slide just for sure. a moment, I just want to tell a, a quick personal story about smiling. So uh, when, when my husband and um, my ch our children were very young, um, in a five-year period, we lived in five different states. And we um, moved to um, Iowa for about a nine-month period. And everybody was teasing me, saying, oh, my gosh, what are you going to do there? You know, it's cow country. There's, you know, there's not going to be anything to do. And I had two, two little babies, um, you know, uh, two and a half and, and less than a year old. Um, but I'll tell you, I had the most beautiful experience in Iowa because every time I went to the grocery store, everyone smiled and said, good morning or hello, or how are you today? And these were strangers. And I can tell you, I just had such a wonderful experience. So um, it really truly means a lot to have someone smile at you and, and you know, welcome you and, and just, uh, it's a great feeling. So 
All right, you can move on to the next slide, Brendan. Right. Um, so really all these strategies that Brendan has talked about, what, what is so neat about them all is they all not only help build the character for everybody else, but they help build our character as well. And they all actually, you know, these things are kind of like there's a boomerang effect. They're good for the soul and they benefit the giver um, as well as the receiver. And it's no different with smiling. And um, there's actually studies that show that smiling release, releases endorphins and other painkillers. And these things can actually elevate our mood. They also relax our body, relieve stress and reduce physical pain. So there's some uh, some articles there that you can look up, but it's a, it's a pretty neat the studies that have been done on smiling. Studies show that smiling, even when you aren't feeling happy, can actually make you feel happier. So just flexing these muscles, you know, in or in and around uh, your your mouth um, can produce these positive emotions and endorphins. So um, when you're feeling stressed, feeling down, you know, it's it's kind of a silly little trick, but you can try the <laughs> the pencil in your mouth trick. I know it's not too uh, hygienic during these COVID times, um, but I'll tell you, I've I've been in my office overwhelmed, stressed, and sometimes I just remember this little trick and I smile. And I, if nothing else, I laugh at myself. So um, just remember that all of these things um, provide exemplars, attach a trait, use quotes, activate, characterize, and smile as an act of service. They all really do have boomerang effects and come right back to you. So thanks for letting me jump on the stage here and uh, talk to you soon. Thank smile. you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Suzanne. And Suzanne is always uh, just an excellent example of that for us. And And one of the things, you know, some of you have seen these videos, but the greeting of school of students at the at the entry at the door uh, to your classroom or the door to a school, um, just it, it sets a tone. A smile at the beginning of the day or the beginning of a class period can can be a pivot in a positive direction. So, um, yeah, Suzanne gave a lot of good uh, evidence that it's not just good for for those you know were there to serve, but it also it also helps. Uh, the giver uh, himself or herself. Well, I, I do want to say uh, thank you for attending, and uh, we're going to open it up for some uh, Q&A here. And uh, Nichelle, how are we doing? I'm going to check in with our timekeeper, Nichelle. We have a few minutes. We have a few minutes. Okay, great. So if, you, if there are any, any uh, questions or, or things you wanted to ask or things you wanted to share, even ideas, um, um, please go ahead and do so. Oh, and I did want to mention uh, that we have uh, a, a simple handout um, that gives just a real quick overview of what we talked about today, just as a way of kind of jogging your memory uh, we covered a lot of material in a short time. So um, there is a uh, that uh, a, a one page or rejuvenating your school culture with the five strategies on it, as well as um, the page that has all of those virtues, our vir virtues matrix. And and again, that gives you a tremendous vocabulary of character. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could could, you know, just uh, uh, help our students? And, and I say this to myself, too you know, be able to use these, these very positive words more and more, these character traits. So any questions? No questions. I think we're looking good. Um, was there anything from your end, Michelle? Anything I'm forgetting? Michelle's going to come back on. Thank maybe you, here. Brendan. <laughs> Thank you, Brendan, so much. Um, it's always really nice to see your uh, enthusiasm for character education and your commitment to it. Um, and I hope you all uh, appreciate it. <laughs> oh, we do have a question. Okay. Let's see. Uh, and I really hope you all enjoyed it. I see that we do have a question from Arthur Schwartz. Hi, Arthur. He is asking, how does a school at every grade level invite a student to seek their own character? What a great question, Arthur. Brendan, what do you have? Yeah, no, thanks, Arthur. Um, at every grade level, I, you know, to seek their, their own character to, um, I think, you know, just my initial thought that comes to mind is it's, you know, that's 
the concept of differentiated instruction comes to mind that, you know, one size doesn't necessarily fit all. And so, you know, age appropriate is important. I know Arthur's done a, a great deal of Arthur, for those of you that may not know on the webinar today is the president of, of character.org. And so um, I just want to, you know, just acknowledge that and thank Arthur for all of his service and leadership in the field of, of character. But uh, Arthur, one of the uh, documents that he's worked extensively on and that he developed was the uh, National um, Character and Social and Emotional Development Guidelines, the CSED National Guidelines, uh, which is available for you can download it on the character.org's website. But one of the things there, I think that that um, that that was really good was the way it it was age appropriate. So th there are stages of moral development, and I won't get into all of that here. But for helping a student to 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 um, to develop their own personal character, I think it's critical to know their age and where they're at. Um, as students, uh, you know, classical education, you know. Um, talked about the earlier ages where there's a lot of memorization and kind of kind of downloading of information and then as students get older their their thinking their ability to analyze to get into uh, rhetorical questions and things of that nature develop further on as they get older so i think i think an awareness of that is very helpful and and also just you know this is it's it's a human endeavor you know human work so uh having that relationship with students so that you can ask them what you know um you're you know pointing out what they you see in them can be really helpful to them because sometimes we may not you know a student may not see the good character a certain trait in themselves but you may recognize it and you may be able to use that as a way to point out something positive so um yeah quick answer uh but hopefully that's somewhat helpful so yep uh i see that some people are asking will we be able to will you be able to get this webinar on social media and yes at the end of this webinar we will be sharing it on our website there is a link to direct you to our webinars past and upcoming um with that in mind that we have our next webinar scheduled for february 17th at 4 p.m Melissa Farley will be presenting strategies to build connectedness, connectedness. And I hope to see you there. Um, I will also like to encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn. Um, and also, if you like what you see, please, please, please contact us to schedule a consultation to see how we could uh, bring what we do to your school, to your uh, to your school district, to your organization. Um, the team is ready and able to help you um, very much. Oh, I have one more question before. Uh, uh, Perky, I will I will uh, get your information and share it with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I am going to share a button with you to schedule a consultation. You can just Click on it now, schedule a consultation. Um, and we, again, thank you so much for attending. Brendan, thank you so much for uh, all that you do and this great presentation. Uh, it's everyone, been a pleasure. Have, well, thank you. <laughs> have a great evening, everyone. We appreciate you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for all that you're doing.